Having the opportunity to design and building at the World Trade Center is amazing, but it also comes with an incredible responsibility. This is not an ordinary building. This isn't just another hotel. When you're building at a place with the history that the World Trade Center has, you can't just build a building. This is the rebuilding of the World Trade Center site, the location of the worst domestic terrorist attack since Pearl Harbor. Daniel Liebeskin created a new rethinking of the World Trade Center site. Liebeskin's master plan began with the tallest building on the site, Tower One, 1,776 feet tall, and each of the towers cascade down from there in a spiral. So in a sense, our site being located on the southern end of the World Trade Center site, we felt it critical to participate in that logic and connect to the overall master plan that Liebeskin first set up. And while our tower is actually not one of the four towers, we thought of it that way. In the office, we call the project Tower 4.5. If you think of old New York, old Manhattan, you think of these beautiful stone rusticated buildings, deep windows, lots of shadow. The Woolworth Building, for example. That's old New York, that's Wall Street. That is the southern edge of what the World Trade Center once was. Our building facing that part of old Manhattan, we referenced that with a big, beautiful stone wall gray rusticated stone, deep square windows, each one casting a shadow. So if you look at the south side of the building, you'll see a massive stone wall that's meant to speak to and reference the New York that came before us. On the north side of the tower, we have a different expression. Here, an acute glass taut corner cantilevers out over the adjacent building, essentially offering the tower to the World Trade Center site. Here, it meets its compatriots. Tower one, two, three, and four, all crisp blue glass buildings that represent a new direction for Manhattan architecture. Like all sites, they bring with them unique challenges, but this site in particular, loaded with the memorial history of the World Trade Center site and the complex safety challenges of New York City made of the site unlike any other. Specific to this site, we had a very interesting challenge. You see, according to New York City zoning laws, the building could not be set back below 90 feet, which meant the podium of the building, the base of the building, was actually a very big, deep structure. Now, in the case of a hotel, you don't actually want a very, very long, deep building because it produces dark rooms that are far from the glass. So we had a challenge. Our desire was to shrink the building back, pull away from the site, and create smaller, more compact hotel rooms. But the city, the zoning required that we hold the street wall, really define that urban edge. So our approach to the challenge was to pull the building back eight feet on one side and three and a half feet on the other side and essentially compress the podium of a building. The problem is the city says, you can't do that. You've got to hold that street wall. So zoning wants a wall. But at the same time, the Department of Buildings says, you can't block a window. They need to have light and air. So it must be a window. So we had to create an object, an architectural element, that on the one hand could satisfy zoning and be a wall, and yet simultaneously be the diametrically opposed thing and satisfy the city and be a window. What we created was a tensile cantilevered mesh wall that algorithmically opened and exposed itself. In a sense, we created almost like an architectural veil, this thin, beautiful metallic mesh that actually wraps over the windows but begins to fall away as it moves away from the corner. So the screen wall gives the impression of solidity but offers the rooms actually a very beautiful view out. Despite the seemingly wild patterning of the design, each piece of mesh moves and eludes every operable window so every single guest can still open their window and see clearly at the World Trade Center Memorial Pools. When designing a building on a site with this level of significance, yes, of course it's gotta be a great building, it's gotta function as a hotel with wonderful rooms and great views and solid structure. But at the end of the day, this thing has to be born of its site. The towers of the World Trade Center are 1,000 feet and taller. In a sense, they're in the sky. When you're standing on the ground, you don't really engage with them as towers. 
but at about 400 feet tall, our building is directly engaged with those who are at the memorial pools. So as you stand there, specifically at the South Pool and look up, it's the corner of this project that you see. There's a responsibility that comes along with that. As a New Yorker who was here that day on 9-11, the World Trade Center has a very specific and important meaning to me. In fact, so much so, I spent about four years at the World Trade Center documenting its redevelopment, creating a film called Rising, Rebuilding Ground Zero. Filming with the architects, the engineers, the survivors, those who lost loved ones, those who worked on the rescue effort, telling their stories. So there was an incredible weight associated with putting a building down on that site. This was a project for me as a New Yorker who wanted to create a way to think about what was happening downtown and to really understand how are we responding. What we put at the World Trade Center site speaks volumes about who we are as New Yorkers and Americans and what is our architectural response to the worst domestic terrorist attack since Pearl Harbor. It's a billion dollar redevelopment site, but it's actually a neighborhood with commercial, cultural, infrastructural, memorial program all right there. To add a hotel to the southern end of the site was an incredible opportunity. What makes a building successful is its ability to fulfill its function, to be a great hotel. What elevates it to architecture is meaning. How does the building communicate more than its function? So for us, whether you're inside of this tower, or in some cases, outside of it looking at the tower, it has a responsibility to reflect the meaning of its site.